There are only three things that nearly all video games have in common. A manuscript, game overs, and money. Lots of money. From the first coin grabbed by Mario back in the NES to the $7 trillion made in Adventure Capitalist, nearly all games have an in-game economy. However, with the exception of MMOs, video games economies have remained quite stagnant in the past 40 years, especially in open world games where great potential could be reached. But before we dive in, stunk that intro. Greetings everyone, Blowfox here, and today we'll talk gold and green. In many modern RPGs and adventure games, all items have a price, and the player is often limited or disincentivized to increase his or her own profit by playing smartly. In this video, I want to propose to you my ideas to make in-game economies more dynamic without punishing players who are not interested in using them. We'll start small and move up step by step, always keeping in mind the practicality of introducing this concept and proposing examples to make it clearer for everybody. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, let's start from the current situation. Today, in open world games, players are not interested in visiting any particular shop more than another one, because most of the time they can sell everything everywhere. This is not a bad idea, after all, if I only want to empty my inventory and cash in, I really don't wish to fast travel to like 8 different cities. However, it does kind of ruin the point of having different markets at all. Why go anywhere in particular if the starting city of your adventure already cracks the best deals? Exploration and world building becomes useless if the rendezvous point is always the same. Limits and conditions for bargaining vary between games, but in general the economies in RPGs function to empty inventories and acquire stronger weapons. Worlds don't usually give meaning to their currency, gold coins and rupees are just… Uh, there, without any context or real meaning. I don't want to follow the stock market, but it would be nice to have at least a briefing economy where it evolves over time. In short, the current situation is that in-game economies are just there. They usually work, but they aren't affected by anything you do. So how do you fix the economy without making it too complex? Here are my three main ideas. Specialized shops, supply and demand, and exchange rates. The first improvement I would immediately introduce in-game is the introduction of standard and specialist markets. Standard shops would allow players to sell and buy all items at standard price, being placed in hotspots like big cities, while specialists would give the players better deals but have a limited category of items to trade. Think of standard markets like town squares and bazaars, where you can find and sell everything, while specialists are shops like armories and libraries, where you can find the specific items but for better prices. This concept is not revolutionary at all. In Animal Crossing, for example, you can sell all your junk to the Nook Brothers for a standard price, or, in alternative, wait for a special character to appear that buys specific items for higher prices. What would be nice is to see this concept in action within big open world RPGs and action adventure games. Let's look at Velen from The Witcher 3 as an example. We could place standard markets in these three cities and some special markets around the map. Now, while you're exploring the world, you may wish to check out these places and perhaps sell some common items for higher prices. Once you learn that a specific place they buy swords and shields for a higher price, you may say, well, uh, since there's a quest to do there anyways, I might as well visit that merchant too. Prices won't be drastically different, but perhaps those common swords could be sold for 10 coins more. Not a bad deal in the long run. Specialized shops already exist in many RPGs, but the problem is that they just limit what the player can buy and sell, but really giving you a better price for visiting them. The problem is not the lack of specific shops, but that these marketplaces do not offer a clear advantage, making them just another place where to fast travel at most. Making these places better incorporated in your journey would increase the desire to travel more around the world, and thus your sense of adventure. One thing is to have some shops where you can sell your items for a lower, higher price. But what if, depending on the situation, the prices themselves would vary depending on your actions? Swords are worth way less to soldiers if the war is over, so why would they pay you more than local markets? Introducing supply and demand. Earlier, I said that in-game economies were not a part of your adventure, but what if they were? Supply and demand is a very easy concept to understand. Diamonds are expensive because they are rare minerals, but if everyone has a diamond, they are not that rare anymore, are they? Thus the price drops. Economics 101. In a video game setting, that would mean that if a city lacks a certain material, they are willing to pay you more to buy it. But if you do, and now that material is common, they will pay you less. Let's go to Haneto village for our example, and let's assume you just sold a ton of opal and amber. Now that the city is well supplied with this material, thanks to you, why would the city need to buy more? 
It would be nice that since the material is so present in the city, it devaluated and now it's worth less, both to buy back and to sell it. Careful, I'm not saying the new price would need to be decimated, but perhaps the selling price for Opal dropped from 60 rupees to 50, so that this new mechanic is not game breaking but still motivates you to go elsewhere to sell your stuff. The opposite would also be true. Perhaps Gerudo Town down there is in desperate need of Opal and Amber, buying it from 70 rupees rather than 60. Details like this makes the economy within a game feel more real and interconnected with your actions, making it a much more complete adventure. A nice detail would be to learn about the price drop or rise not by annoying research but by just talking to the people in town. Perhaps you're just chilling at Jubilee City and chit chat with somebody and the NPC tells you, hey, did you hear about the news? Moonstones are being selling sky high lately, hinting you that it's the right moment to sell your rare minerals. Again, these are not just details but are the manifestation of what's happening in the world, even conditioned by your own actions. Main story plot events may have an impact of the necessity or lack thereof of certain items, meaning that the markets will follow suit and showcase that change happening in real time. If the war is over, so is the shield industry. The next logical step forward to make a more briefing economy would be to add multiple currencies. After all, who's even minting all these silver and gold coins? By not having different currencies, it is assumed that the world to explore is much smaller and local than it might actually be. Some games such as Fallout New Vegas have some different currencies, but at the end of the day, caps still remain the preferred method of payment between all merchants across the Mojave. So the question is, uh, how can games make usage of different currencies without making them tedious to use? The answer is easier than you may think. When we think of different currencies, we often think of modern countries that print fiat money issued by modern governments. In America they have US dollars, and in Japan they have Japanese yens. But back in medieval Europe, a scenario usually of inspiration for RPGs, kingdoms attributed value to coins based on the material they were made of. Long story short, the material inside of the coin mattered the most, and while the value would depend also from where it came from, a gold coin was still worth more than a silver one, no matter the origin. To translate this concept into gameplay, I will go with another example. This time, we're going to the Witcher's Kelge. Even if the archipelago and the mainland trade, they both have different governments and different economies. A merchant from Oxenfurt may still accept your Skellige money, but those 100 coins you have are worth a bit less, meaning that his prices will slightly rise. A system like this would keep the efficiency of having one currency and would motivate the player to visit different markets around the game. With this system in place, the world would feel much more alive and traveling to far off places much more challenging. For even bigger immersion, perhaps there are rival factions that don't accept each other's currency and may even look you down if you pay with the enemy's gold. The follow-up question would be how to keep track of what type of money the player is carrying. The easiest way to show this would be by placing your mouse on top of the generic money icon and have a small window that specifies the origin of your currency, like you see on screen. Nothing too complex, a generic you have 100 coins, 70 of which are from this country and 30 from this other country, will do the trick and make the overall experience much more complete. Economies in games have great potential, and in this video I hope I convince you that simple changes can be made without disrupting the flow of the game. I realize that the examples I use are extremely specific and targeted, only to RPGs and adventure games. Of course, inflation would not quite fit well in Graph and Tauto. The point of having a more planned economy is not for having more stuff to worry about, but to have a more believable world, a world that evolves and changes with the player's adventure, where the economy would be a display of such mutation. But what do you think about the topic? Would you say it's absurd to change what works, or do you see potential on the rise? I'll let you decide. As usual, if you made it this far, it means you are fantastic and enjoy what I do. I do realize this topic is totally specific and might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I really wanted to experience something new, so do let me know if you like this video or not. If you want to check out my future projects, subscribe for my channel and see you next time. Arrivederci!